We're very lucky to be joined on the show for the first time by freelance writer George Chidi. Welcome to the Damage Report. Happy to be here. Thanks. Uh, very glad to have you on. Uh, myself and my team uh, recently read your piece in The Intercept about uh, the issue with access to mental health care and some of the related issues in the Atlanta area. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, so the short answer is there really isn't access at all. Not really. Uh, I, I'm exaggerating, but only a little bit. Uh, Georgia's got about half the mental health care workers it needs, half, half of what you'd expect in the rest of the country. Uh, it is ranked 51st by you know a mental health ranking group. Uh, as a practical matter, like as often as not, if you're in crisis in in Atlanta and you're broke, you've got to get arrested before somebody's going to give you the help you need, and maybe not even then. Yeah, yeah, and I know you mentioned in the piece that the widespread belief that that's always how it is that people get arrested, they do a petty crime specifically so they can get arrested. That that generally is overplayed as sort of yeah. a trope, but but in this case, you've you've identified cases of it. So yeah, I've seen it a couple of times, and and the one that I I spoke about in the story uh, was related to a woman I'm calling Harmony, who. I mean, there was consensus amongst the social workers and mental health care professionals that I spoke to about her case that she really should be hospitalized or in a care facility of some sort and not lying in her own waste on a street corner for five months, which is basically what happened. I mean, right downtown, middle of everything, Atlanta, um, one of the iconic places in the city, like. Big Coca-Cola sign, it's five points, it is literally the center of the city. And here's a woman who's like naked from the waist down, living in her own waist, her body waist, because she's got a, a incontinence problem. Um, and frankly, the like the response had been up until I started really pouring into it was, Let's move her around every few days so that we can power wash the street. Um, I mean, it's outrageous, but it's the it's the state of healthcare, and not just in Georgia, but in much of the South, in many, many of the places that didn't expand Medicare and Medicaid access. It's it shows what our priorities really look like because we all say that this is ridiculous, but when you start asking people to make sacrifices, either tax money or facilities in their own neighborhood. There's always something that's more important. Yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. it's like a, a perfect example of the overall approach to a lot of issues. It's move the community around a bit, make it an issue for someone else. In this case, you've identified it on an individual level. And, and you, you stress at multiple points in the piece that um, women like the woman you're referring to as Harmony and others are known by the system. They they have multiple interactions with the system, but no health is coming. And it is clear that while the funding isn't there, it's not without costs, both you know societal health effects for her, and even just costs like what whatever they're doing with moving individuals around so they can power wash streets. There's a cost associated with that. So money is clearly being spent, but it doesn't appear to be spent in a way that produces the best outcomes for virtually anyone um, being, you know, being touched on by this story. That's the thing that drives me absolutely nuts. So the state is underspending its homelessness housing budget by about seven million dollars a year because they can't find landlords to take the money. There's a reliance on uh, private apartment and condos, there, there isn't a lot of public housing left. We started tearing that down about 25 years ago and we never really rebuilt it. We just assumed some landlord would take a voucher, except landlords aren't taking those vouchers because we have a massive housing crunch and rents are skyrocketing and they, they don't need them. There's a lot of people ready to rent an apartment when it shows up and at market rate. So like the state gets, $27 million a year and they spend 20 and they're leaving seven on the table just because they can't find anybody who's willing to take the money. Every time, every time they run an ambulance to go and take care of somebody like Harmony, it costs $1,700. 
just to transport her from the street to the public hospital. Like you stay a day at the public hospital and you're looking at seven or eight grand, um, which is why there's this emphasis on turning them in and out of the hospital as quickly as you can, because it's expensive. But for the cost of two of those stays, you've got that person's housing covered for a year, as long as you could find somebody willing to take the money. Like there's this interlocking mesh of uh, policy problems that uh, a situation like Harmony exposes. It's yeah. not just money, it's housing, it's the way we deal with mental health care and other things. Uh, I, I can definitely see that, and um, you you point out some of the market pressures that are affecting um, the, the success rate of some of these potential solutions. So, then wouldn't the answer then be potentially more public housing? Like if they they're literally not even using the money they have right now with the the current accepted potential solutions to these problems. Is there a push to produce more actual public housing either at the state level or federally? It's dripping. It's dri like little. Bits and pieces, little drips, nothing, nothing substantial enough to uh, nothing substantial enough to to actually get it going. I mean, and it's incredibly frustrating. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm uh, having a power problem. No worries. The no. Uh, this <laughs> like we need thousands of units, and we're gonna get hundreds, uh, hundreds, maybe dozens. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I, I, if I don't play with this, you're gonna lose me, there we go. No worries at all. All right, yeah, if they, if they don't, if they don't build thousands of units, I mean really thousands of units, like they're gonna, this homelessness problem is going to persist. They need more than a dozen here or maybe a hundred there. There needs to be a serious public commitment to this. We're not getting that. Well, this is a problem that we've talked about in the context of here in LA and around the country. It's great to see this like really tragic zoomed in view of it happening um, in Atlanta. And if you'd like more information uh, about what George has written about, it's available at The Intercept. Um, George, we appreciate your work. Uh, is there anything else uh, recently that you've worked on that you that you think people should take a look at? Uh, if you're somebody who's following uh, crime and public safety and the increase in violent crime in urban America. Take a look at the Substack that I've been writing for the last six or seven months, uh, the Atlanta Objective, uh, dot Substack com. Awesome, George awesome. G. We appreciate your work and uh, for taking time out to, to talk with us today. Thank you very much. Thanks. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want, with a range of co hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.